down the definitions of the solar cell actually there is a misinterpretation for solar cell that it converts the in the definition most of you will write that it converts the uh, light energy into electrical energy no doubt it's true but it is the utility of the device it be it works on the principle of the photoelectric effect so solar cell is a cell which which can which uh, works on the principle basis of the photovoltaic effect when photons incident on the solar cell they can be they will be absorbed if their energy is appropriate with or say matching with the energy band gap of the material they will be absorbed electron hole pair is generated and due to the junction barrier this pair is separated and due to that uh, there is a potential difference which is additional to the junction barrier potential and that can act as a battery or say external power supply so this is the definition for solar cell then uh, uh, what are the materials that can be used in the in the making of the solar cell say most of most importantly silicon apart from that uh, gallium alloys or say gallium arsenide gallium phosphide can be also used as the additional material for solar cell okay next one uh, give the applications of superconductivity mentioning josephson devices and magnetic levitations in detail there are actually three marks for the, this question so first one has to write down the <coughs> three applications major three applications first is maglev train that is based upon the magnetic levitation that is uh, superconducting materials they are in the coaches in the bottoms of the coaches of the train and the tracks they are also made up of the magnetic materials when uh, superconducting material they will be uh, subjected to the magnetic field up to a certain magnetic field they will be uh, repelling the magnetic field according to the meissner effect so based upon meissner effect uh, this uh, magnetic levitation can be achieved in order to uh, develop the application develop its application as a train right so this is the maglev train magnetic levitation second one is uh, the josephson effect or josephson effect says that uh, when a superconducting material in the form of a ring they will be uh, there is a separation in between two superconducting materials in the form of uh, the insulator very thin insulator insulator then uh, it it leaves its nature to insulate and it allows the current to pass through so this insulating wafer uh, this this type of ring with insulating wafer that is known as the josephson ring or josephson device and uh, they can be used to develop an a very important application called squid s q u i d and apart from that superconducting material can be used as ki in chirotron in permanent magnets right so these are the different applications of the superconductivity next question is uh, question number 6a1 expand laser describe the construction and working of ndyg laser with a uh, suitable energy level diagram okay uh, so what is the full form of the laser laser is light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation so it can be uh, described as uh, say construction and working of ndyg laser one has to explain the principle of the ndyg laser is what it is based upon the stimulated emission of the laser uh, what is the there are actually basically three important factors important requirements in order to form a laser system what is an active medium here in ndyg laser the active medium is yg rod yttrium aluminum garnet rod in which nd is doped in a very small amount nd3 plus y3 plus ions are replaced with nd3 plus ions so nd3 plus ions they are the active centers second one the second requirement is uh, the population inversion mechanism or say pumping mechanism pumping is the process to achieve population inversion between two desired states of active center so population inversion can be achieved here using a uh, uh, krypton or xenon lamp and uh, this is actually the pumping mechanism and third one third important requirement is the optical resonator cavity so they are they it consists of two mirrors one is half polished another is uh, fully polished so one partially and another fully polished mirror that this pair can be act can act as a 
resonator cavity for this particular la antibiotic laser. So these are the three requirements, and then one should draw the figure of the uh, given antibiotic laser. and then one can describe its construction and working in order to have uh, the lasik action possible from the laser device that we are describing and uh, one has to define the energy level one has to draw the energy level diagram it is actually a four level laser so one can draw the uh, energy level diagram in order to have the uh, lasik action between two metastable states okay next one discuss the application of laser in various fields it carries three marks friends so we will have to list down all the application in all the different fields like military it can be used as a death ray in order to uh, attack to the enemy submarine in uh, uh, communication it can laser diodes can act as a as a very important uh, communication device they can be used in or in uh, they can be used for different commercial applications they can be used for different engineering applications scientific applications are large right so we have, we will have to list down all the types of application here uh, next one uh, give difference between step index fiber and graded index fiber what are it carries two marks friends so you will have to write down any four points which defines which differentiates between step index and graded index fiber what is actually the index profile on the basis of the index profile that is the refractive index versus the uh, radius graph one can define one can classify the fiber optic cable in two parts one is step index fiber another is graded index fiber in step index fiber uh, from the center of the fiber optic cable that is center of the core uh, the radial the refractive index varies uniformly sorry refractive index changes exactly at the core cladding interface up to the from the center up to the core it will be uh, having one value n1 and thereafter from core cladding interface to cladding end it it will have n2 value otherwise on the another side in the graded index uh, fiber from the center it varies uh, very like you regularly in from n1 to n2 so it is gradually varying index fiber in the cladding it will have a uniform value of n2 you can also draw the graph draw this uh, index profile uh, to differentiate between these two materials uh, step index and graded index uh, fiber fiber cables right uh, next one briefly discuss fuel cells what are the fuel cells they are actually basically they are the cells which uses different types of fuel into uh, in order to uh, achieve the in order to have the power supply from them right basic fuel cell is hydrogen cell another is li ion battery they are actually rechargeable cells so uh, one can different one can uh, definitely uh, write down about fuel cells it within this uh, within a uh, very short uh, words because it is it carries two marks next one it is actually again a numerical so we'll move to the paper a step index fiber has a numerical aperture of 0.26 we will first of all list down the quantities that we are given na is equal to 0.26 then a core refractive index that is n1 or eta1 is 1.5 and diameter that is 2 a 100 micro what we will have to find out first we have to find out the refractive index of the cladding n2 second the acceptance angle that is phi in max <coughs> excuse me and third one the Uh, the maximum number of modes with a wavelength of one micron. That is again, it will be here one micron that a fiber optic cable can carry. So the answer is uh, the solution is first one, n a uh, n a is equal to under root of n one square minus n two square. That implies what should be the equation for n two square? N two square is equal to n one square minus n 
a square right so the answer is here by substituting the value one can have the answer as 1.47 as n2 okay now second one phi in max that is the acceptance angle acceptance angles formula says it is sin inverse of na that is sin inverse of what is the numerical aperture given 0.26 that is 15 degree friends phi in max equal to 15 degree and third one that is the maximum number of modes that this fiber can carry at a particular wavelength of 1 micron the number of modes nm can be given by this is actually remember a step index fiber so it is v square divided by 2 so 2 pi a upon lambda into na that is v the whole square divided by 2 substituting the values 2 into 3.14 into a if we are given twice a 100 micron so it is 50 micron divided by lambda it is 1 micron if you want to convert we can convert this micrometers into uh, meters but since both are in micrometers one can if we don't convert then also it will do 0.26 the whole square that is na this is actually the whole square and divided by 2 okay so with this what is the answer for nm the answer is 332 modes so in order to write down it clearly you can write down as first second and third as a result first is n2 another is phi in max and another is number of modes right so you can always write it down separately in order to highlight them okay now uh, moving ahead the next one is question number 7 explain with neat sketch carbon nanotubes giving its structure properties and applications this question carries four marks it is a very important question carbon nanotubes they are made up of nano materials and uh, its structure we should explain its structure with a clear diagram we should write down their properties that it carries this much number of carbons and uh, we will have to write down their applications uh, applications can be two or more okay uh next one the second question it says justify and give comments on at macro scale the physical and the chemical properties are not dependent on the size of the material but at the nano scale everything will charge including color uh, melting point and everything will change including color melting point and chemical properties so we will have to justify this question with uh, the proper comment that is uh, we can we can uh, differentiate at macro scale and nano scale structures at macro scale everything depends upon the different property or say every property depends upon the size of the material uh, say it does not depend on the size of the material it depends upon the uh, different reactions which material carries but at nano scale everything depends upon the size of the material because at nano scales uh, one dimension is almost zero almost nil and uh, due to that Uh, the reaction of the material with different uh, surroundings that changes and due to that color melting point and chemical properties also changes uh, question number uh, b means 7b1 define and describe surface to volume ratio and quantum confinement effects this carries two marks so one has to in brief in a nutshell describe the surface to volume ratio at a uh, at nano scales and one has to define the quantum confinements at nano scale uh in very in in a very uh, short words very small words next one give the difference between metallic and non metallic glasses 
uh, we have to one has to write down the difference four differences between metallic and non metallic glasses which this question carries two marks so one has to write, write down at least four differences between two glass this type of two glasses non metallic glasses are the normal glasses that we use and metallic glasses they are actually metal alloys and uh, but they are not allowed to cool at a proper time right so we can write down the differences very easily the third one the last one is uh, one has to list down any applic any six applications of the nano materials and uh, knowing very well that there are there is a large uh, list of the applications of the nano materials we have to write down at least the six applications of the nano materials right okay so thank you so much for uh, providing me this opportunity i i'm thankful to gtu thank you